Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are at Audio Advice Live. I'm hanging out with Richard Latofsky with Mad VR. Tell us what's happening with Mad VR, how that can impact somebody's home theater and some of the features that you bring to the table. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm pleasure to be here. Um, so I'm glad that we're here at Audio Advice Live, as Michael said. We have today with us the Mad VR MV Extreme. It's an HDR video processor, it does dynamic frame-by-frame -frame tone mapping, subtitle management, aspect ratio control, instant black bar detection, nonlinear stretch, the list goes on and on, and we'll dig into that as we go through. So that's a, some big words, right? The cool thing is Richard's got a sweet presentation. We're gonna look at this TV over on the side and we're gonna go through some of the features and hopefully the camera will be able to pick up what we're able to see with our visual eyes. So I'm really excited to share this with you. So Richard, let's head over to the TV and let's check this out. Let's do it. Okay, so here we have an example of HDR dynamic frame-by-frame -frame tone mapping, mm -hmm. one of the Envy strong suits among many others. Other displays have built-in HDR tone mapping, but the Envy is an external video processor, has special algorithms to really pull out the most amount of detail and prevent blown out highlights and crushed blacks. So what you see here, this is a lot of HDR in this scene. Mm -hmm. This is a high, uh, high knit scene. Okay. And what happens is I've got a button here on the remote control. When I press this, it turns the MadVR Envy's HDR processing off gotcha. and passes the HDR signal to the display okay. or the projector, whatever you happen to be using. Sure, in this case, it's a TV. Exactly. And at that point, the TV will take over and do its own tone mapping. And the, what you're going to see here is very indicative of what you see on other projectors, displays, other TVs as well. Okay. Okay, so I'll go ahead and press this button now to turn our tone mapping off. Oh, wow. And you can see it just gets completely blown out. You, you have kidding, like we lost all the detail in here, all of the detail down in here. See a couple blades of grass, right. that's crazy. Yeah. So the TV just isn't processing that well. Yeah, it's a lot of HDR mapping. and it's just having trouble figuring out how to actually process it. Gotcha. So that's what's special about HDR tone mapping is that no matter how bright or how dark the scene is, we're still going to render it to a perfect HDR presentation. Okay, so let's go back to that. Let me say it one more time. Wow, so now we've got all this background detail. You can see the trees back here. You see every blade of grass in there. That's right. Honestly, that's, that's pretty f remarkable. That's phenomenal. Now we're gonna take a look, Michael, at another scene, this one from Harry Potter. You okay. can see all this great HDR happening in the background. This is the Envy doing the tone mapping. Sure. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it here. Now what you can see here is this really nice, saturated color. Sure. Even though it's super bright, you've got this green, really nice sticking out here and right. all this fine detail. Sure. Okay. Now if I go ahead and turn our tone mapping off okay. and let the projector display do its tone mapping, this is what you will typically see. Oh my goodness. Like, I mean, this is completely blown out. We do have some of the red here on top and the bottom, the green over there. But when we switch back, I want to look down here at this detail too. Okay. I'm going to switch back. Yeah, even in here, we picked up a lot more detail right down here, and of course, a lot of detail here. And saturation and, returns. Yeah. And now, this is really interesting. Take a look at this really bright green line that's okay. running right through here. Sure. Watch what happens. Turn ours off. It just blends yeah. into we just don't even like see the green. Right. So all this detail is out. Okay. So now we skipped ahead to this image here, where you can just see this very faint detail and sure. the face in here. Okay. This is with the MV toe mapping on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Okay. Again, we're like completely, where'd the face go? Yeah, you really kind of lose gone. a lot of it. Now we're gonna take another look at one of these other faces that appears. And there it is. Okay. You can see, clearly see the face here. Right up here. We go ahead and turn our tone mapping off and let the display do the tone mapping. Yeah, we lost a lot of detail. You can still see a little bit of his face, a little bit of his eyes, a tad bit of his nose. His hat detail is really just gone. Yeah, that's correct. Let's bring it back on. Oh man. You even see color that's coming out. That's right. So that's another thing. So it's not only finding the detail, it's actually pulling color back into right. the image. Yeah, it has a tendency, the HDR tone mapping, one of the things that we focus on is making sure that we get the color as well as the saturation levels and all the detail correct. Gotcha. Without it, this high HDR content will tend to blow out not only the details, but also the color and make everything undersaturated. Gotcha. Michael, we're going to talk next about auto aspect ratio handling and how Envy instantly adjusts the aspect ratio to match the content. Okay. Because the Envy can fit any aspect ratio content to any aspect ratio screen. Gotcha. So 
in show environments, it can be very challenging to have a big screen set up, a projector set up, sure. and all the lighting, uh, and be able to still see the image. Right. So what we do at the shows is we take a, uh, a masking panel. Okay. So here, this is a 240 panel that we just sit right over the TV, sure. and it actually frames this to simulate what it would be like watching this gotcha. on a 240 aspect movie screen. Sure, so we've got more TV up here and more TV down here, and we're just hiding that. Right, exactly. So this would be, if this was a 240 aspect ratio movie, this is how it would fit in here. Gotcha, so we just turned the lights up so you guys could see. This is like black velvet, it's gonna be hard to see anyway, but we wanted to get give you an idea of what that looks like and how that's set up before we go to this next demo. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at a scene from Interstellar. Interstellar has both 16 by nine and widescreen right, scope which is during the movie. That's right. And so whether you're watching like an Apple TV with a 16 by nine movie, and then you, you are 16 by nine user interface, yeah. you play a movie, it's scope, now it goes wide. Correct. Okay, now you have to zoom the projector to fill that. Yeah. And then you say, oh, you know what, let's pick out a different movie. You go back to the 16 by nine Apple TV menu, and now your content is on the ceiling yep. and on the floor. So I deal with that with my projector because I use the uh, zoom or what do they call it? Uh, lens memory. That's right. On that. And so right. anytime that I have that zoomed out for my full movie, which is in 2.35, everything's above and below my screen. Right. right. Okay. And so, so I'm tracking. one of the key benefits of the Envy's aspect ratio controls, it delivers constant image height, okay. which is really just a semi fancy way of saying that the height is always the same. And it's just whether it's going to be on a 16 by 9 frame like this, mm -hmm. or it's going to be widescreen on a scope image. Gotcha. So as you can see here, hopefully the camera picks it up, we've got the edge of our masking screen, right. and then you've got the black bars on each side, as you would expect with sure. 16 by 9 content on a scoped image. Correct. Okay. So we'll go ahead and play this. And you can see here, we've got 16 by 9 content, right. and the next couple scenes are 16 by 9, and then it just goes to scope. So this is still 16 by 9 and then right. straight so to scope. So now we're all the way scope. And then back, back to, to 16, 16 by 9. So your processor is handling this internally. That's right. And as you can see, as it goes back and forth, it's instant. Mine doesn't do that. <laughs> so that's the challenge with lens memory yeah. is you would go, you'd either have to watch the whole movie as a window box gotcha. with black bars on each side. Sure. Or you'd have to zoom out. But if you zoom out when it goes to 16 by 9, that's when you run up with the content on the screen in the wall. Nice. Now, this naturally leads to the next question, which is, well, how do I get rid of the black bars? So that's a good topic to talk about our nonlinear stretch. Okay. So nonlinear stretch is the ability to take this content and make it look like it's scope. Now, this is actually native scope right here. Right. So what I'm going to do is go, we're going to restart this and go back to the beginning of the clip. Okay. And this time, we're going to turn on the nonlinear stretch. Okay. So that'll take the 16 by 9 and stretch it to fill the 2.35? You got it. Gotcha. Okay, Michael. So we're right back to where we were before, except okay. this time we're going to demonstrate nonlinear stretch. Okay. Okay. So this is a 16 by 9 aspect content on the screen right now. Sure. Okay. So what's going to happen is nonlinear stretch, what that does is it provides a way to fill the black bar areas in right. so that you don't have these black bars because a lot of end users wind up saying, hey, why do I have these bars? Sure. I've got this big expensive screen. I want to fill the whole thing. Sure. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on and it's going to fill it in perfectly. Now, what's really special about our nonlinear stretch is that it's the only one that combines both vertical compression and horizontal expansion. Okay. Okay, so let's think about the screen like it was a sponge. Gotcha. Okay, if you take a sponge and you compress it vertically, what happens? So the sides are going to kind of expand? The sides are going to expand. Okay. Okay, so we get natural horizontal expansion when we compress. Gotcha. And then we just add a little bit more of extra horizontal expansion to finish it off. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the menu and I'm just going to tell it I want you to fill the screen for me. Okay, so mathematically, that smart fit just said, okay, I'm gonna take this and, and stretch it, and That's I'm right. noticing, I don't see like his face being distorted. It looks very natural. That's right. And very that's cool. one of the things that makes that nonlinear stretch so, uh, so special for us, yeah. is that that vertical compression along with the horizontal expansion allows us to share that geometric distortion nice. across both axes. Okay. Okay. So let's go to go ahead and we're gonna play this same clip that we just looked at, right. except this time we're gonna use the nonlinear stretch. Okay. And what you'll see is that all the 16 by nine content looks like scope content. So it'll be like this. And all the scope content it's continues to look scope. like scope. Okay. 
Gotcha. And it blurs the line between what is actually scope and what is actually 16 by 9. And the beauty of that is it allows the end user to say, hey, I just want to fill up my beautiful screen. I don't want to see black bars. And they don't even know anymore what aspect ratio the content really is. Gotcha. Let's so go mathematically, ahead. it's doing this in real time. That's right. So remember, this was all 16, that was 16 by, nine. by 9. And that was too, right? That's what that was as well. And wow. so was the next scene. And then right here, it goes that to scope. That was scope, and it just stays there. And then it went back to 16 by 9 here. Check. It just stays that, in scope. Like you can't, you, I visually cannot see that, oh man, it's doing something wonky here. It's stretching this image. That's fantastic, Richard. Yeah, that's really nice. So now what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate what about a 16 by 9? Because a lot of people, when they see a demonstration like this, sure. they say, hey, that's great, but I only have a 16 by 9 screen. Gotcha. Can I benefit from nonlinear stretch as well? The answer is yes. So to do this, I need to convert this TV back to okay. a 16 by 9 screen. Sure. And to do this, we'll just take this masking panel right off. Gotcha. And now we have... Just lay it off to the side over here. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, Michael, so now what we've done is remove the masking panel, right. and we have a regular 16x9 TV now. Mm -hmm. So your viewers will recognize this immediately. Sure. Okay? You've got a scope movie on yep. a 16x9 TV. Right. You're going to have these black bars. Sure. A lot of times users will say, these black bars are annoying. How do I get rid of them? Yeah. Well, you really can't get rid of them in an ideal way. Right. So with our nonlinear stretch, as I mentioned earlier, you can fit any aspect ratio of content okay. to any aspect ratio of screen. Gotcha. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go to this profile, which gives us a scope movie on a 16 by 9 screen. Okay. Gotcha. And you can just see now, look at the level of immersion. Sure. And look at this. Still looks perfectly geometrically yeah. And nothing together. looks distorted. So we, we didn't get rid of all the gray bars. Correct. But we got rid of probably half of it at least. Right. You can get more aggressive with it if okay. you want. Um, if you try to get rid of the rest gotcha. or all of it, that's when it can start to look a little wonky. Sure. Yeah, right? yeah. So what we find is this is a good balance between gotcha. not adding any noticeable artifacts or distortion to the image yeah. while also getting a very immersive experience. Now remember too, we're looking at this on a 65 inch TV. Sure. You do this at 12 feet yeah. on a 12 foot screen yep. or 150 that's right. inches in some people's cases. Yeah. And these, this level of black bar that you're looking at giving up yeah, yeah. is, you know, That's like true. this yep. on each side, right? That's so now it's just a sliver. So you can see that. Now what I'm going to go ahead is I'm going to put this in motion so we can just see how nice this looks. We could go ahead if we wanted to be more aggressive, take out maybe another half of what's okay. on the top and bottom. But people have different sensitivities to the geometric stretch. Sure. So generally we find this is a safe zone where most customers really enjoy the, the image. But look at the immersion. Yeah. The level of immersion here for a scope image on a 69 TV is unprecedented. Okay, Michael, the last demo we have for you here today okay. is our subtitle management. Gotcha. Okay, now let me just show you real quick what we're talking about, why subtitle matters. If you look at subtitle management, if you have a scope image on a scope screen, your subtitles are below it. Correct. What happens is, when you don't have an MB, you're zooming the lens. Remember, with an MB, your lens is always zoomed. But without an MB, you're going to zoom the lens to fill this. But when you zoom this, what happens to your subtitle? Everything moves, and your subtitle winds up down on the um, screen masking or on the wall. Correct. So you can't even see it. Can't even see it. Gotcha. Or worse, it's just a distraction. That, like, what is that? Right. Right? So subtitles with an MB, the MB allows you to see the image, watch the movie at full screen. Okay. The entire time there's no subtitles on the screen. Right. And then when subtitles appear, bloop, automatically just brings in just the amount of black bar needed okay. to fit that content in there. Gotcha. And let's take a look at that in real life. All right. So you see here, we're getting to enjoy our movie at full scope. Right. Instead of watching like a poster stamp, right. we've got the whole thing up. Then when he comes up from behind and stops talk, starts talking, all of a sudden you'll see just Subtitles will just appear and it'll hold there while he's talking. Okay, so you see what happened at that point. Subtitles appear, it's holding that aspect ratio because right. it's expecting more subtitles to follow. Gotcha, okay. That's a configurable setting we call the stickiness. Okay. So you can control how long. Some people say, hey, can I just, once it knows there's subtitles in the movie, sure. can you just make it stay that way for the rest of the movie so the next time they come it doesn't move again? Absolutely. Or you can have it so that after X amount of seconds or minutes, right. 
of no subtitles, it will just go back. Gotcha. So that's a beautiful thing. Now, I'll show you one other quick little thing that really ties it all together. If, if your audience is really focusing on this, you have to realize that when we bring up the screen here mm -hmm. and shrink this, right. technically we should have black bars appear on both of the sides right. as well. Yeah. Okay? But where are they? They're not there. So I have to come over here if you really want to see them. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. So okay. Turn that off. So right here. But is this the is what the aspect ratio gotcha. actually is when you pull this up on the bottom. Gotcha. So this kind of just ties a couple of the features together nice. because what we're doing is we're combining our our subtitle management with NLS to just go ahead and nicely finish this off. And I'll turn that right back on. So there's the black bars, and then now they're gone. As you can see, even with the stretch, there's no effect on the subtitles, it looks perfectly proportional to what you would expect the text to be. Super cool. So Richard, thanks so much for giving us just a Absolutely. really hands-on practical demonstration of what MavVR Envy can do for both projector as well as a TV. So if somebody wants more information on MavVR or even how to purchase one, where do they find that information from? Sure, if you go to www.madvrenvy.com, You'll find resources for the MV, including articles, documentation, all sorts of how-tos, and further demonstrations. There's a section on the a website that says where to buy. You click that, and you'll be, get connected with an authorized MV dealer. We'll be more than happy to help answer your questions. Awesome. Well, guys, we've got much more content coming from Audio Advice Live here on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we will catch you in the next video.